How is your morning? Praise. And how are you feeling today? Praise. You're looking really beautiful. Praise. I know today is a day to talk about academics, career choices, and all that. But I wish to start it off by tying life to death and death to life. There's a lady called Brownie Ware who wrote a book called The Top Five Regrets of the Dying. She is a nurse in the US and she was taking care of terminally ill patients. And she decided to ask them a few questions as she was taking care of them. One of the questions was, if you had a chance to live your life all over again, would you do it differently? The other question was, do you have any regrets in life? And she decided to categorize the feedback she received into five and, and called it the top five regrets of the dying. And some of those regrets were, I wish I had the courage to express myself. I wish I had the courage to live a life true to myself and not a life others expected of me. I wish I had allowed myself to be happier. I wish I hadn't worked so hard at the expense of some really important things in my life. The other regret was, I wish I had stayed in touch with my family and my friends. A few of us have the, the privilege of getting to know that you know we have a few days to live and, and we will die and maybe get the chance to make our ways right love the people we need to love, forgive the people and events we need to forgive, appreciate the people around us. But for most of us, people never have that chance to, to prepare to go. And you are here at the prime of your life in one of the most amazing institutions one can be in, learning in the, in the best possible way, having amazing teachers, having amazing professionals from great institutions, such as those that were here at the front introducing themselves, coming to just share with you, inspire you, and help you be the best you can be, and help you see the possibility of imagination and the possibility of dreams. Abraham Lincoln said that what counts most in the end is not the number of years we get to live, but the years in our lives. There are people who die young, like Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and a few other people, yet they have impacts from generation to generation. And there are people who die 90, 100, and we forget about them in a matter of days, weeks. So it's not about the number of years we get to live, but the years in our lives. And the years in our lives are defined by many things but most of those many things are the little things that sometimes we tend to forget. Now, human life is, has, has stages. We are born, then we become toddlers, we become teenagers, we become young adults, and life goes on till the point when we are senior citizens. What I have discovered and what I have learned is that how we live life and the experiences that we go through at any one stage in life then begin to shape the next stage in life. So where you are at today is a very pivotal, very critical, very important stage you're in, in shaping your career, your future, your legacy, and your life in general. So while preparing to come and, and share about the roses, I, I read a few things. For instance, that um, roses, the, the petals from the roses uh, usually provide extracted oils um, that are used for culinary purposes and for cosmetic uses. They are given out as gifts. They're used to make scented candles. Sometimes they're used in weddings and even in, in death. So you can see there are so many uses of the roses. We get to be at the point in our lives when we blossom, we are beautiful, we are amazing, we, we smell good. 
I'm sure you can, you can take a moment and just smell that petal that you have. Don't they smell nice? Yes, they do. And so I use this to symbolize how fresh, energetic, creative, beautiful we are as individuals. The interesting thing about life is that we move from stage to stage, from this, and moments will come in life when we will be tired, exhausted, but still, of course, beautiful within, but tired, not as energetic and as blooming as this bouquet of flowers right here. So as we think about our lives and how to live our lives in such a way that by the end of time you look back, you will be happy. That when that day comes for you to go, whether it will be sudden or whether you will have time to prepare and see it coming, you will say, I am happy, I lived a full life. I live my life on the legacy and on the mission that I want to love fully, embrace every moment that comes in life. I want to serve selflessly. Any moment, any opportunity I get to serve, that is all I need to do. And I, lead, I need to live my life fully, every single moment, every single minute of my life, because time is so precious. And time does not stop for us to pick ourselves together and then keep going. Time moves, whether we have stopped or not. Time is always fleeting. So at one point we are here, energetic, young, creative, dreaming and all that, and moments come when we can still have the ability to do that, but we will be tired. So how do we live our lives today in a full way to be able to maximize every little moment in our lives and be as amazing as the professionals that came to speak to us today? You will be meeting them later on in the day. So I wish to use this chance to then just share a few lessons about life from the roses and even from the dry rose that we have here. What is your dream? What do you dream of, of becoming and doing? And I'd like for you to remember that we have jobs, we have careers, and we have purpose. You might find three different people doing the same thing, but then they define it differently. For some, they'd say, this is my job. I wake up, I come to work, do this, and go home. Somebody will say, this is my career. I hope to sharpen and hone my skill in this and be the best at it. It's just my career. I don't enjoy it much, but, but it's my career. And you'd find somebody else who says, this is what I do for a living, but this is the one thing I can do for free because I love it, I enjoy it, it makes me come alive. I can do it over and over for free and still never lose enthusiasm. I am passionate about it. I go to bed to sleep. I wake up in the morning looking forward to doing this one thing. What is that one thing for you? What stands out for me, as I have observed, is academic success is good, but you have to be able to couple that up with ability to think critically, ability to communicate, ability to collaborate with your friends and teammates, ability to have empathy and compassion, ability to be authentically you, ability to speak up, take part in sporting activities out there, in clubs, whether entrepreneurship clubs or debating clubs, not just books. Books are important, but living a full life is even much more important. And if you can have the courage to pursue that one thing that you love and you love so much because you want to find yourself useful to the world through that passion that you have, I think that would be the greatest success. Having the courage to pursue your passion, not what 
daddy wants, not what mommy wants, but what you want. That is what counts. Lesson number two is that true beauty is within. True beauty, true and lasting beauty is within. Sometimes I get the chance to interact with young women and young men. And I meet girls who don't feel beautiful or powerful, or they've been told stuff, they've really been put down, and they don't feel like anything good can come out of them. That on the surface, we're looking good, we're glowing, makeup and all that, but within, we are broken, we are hollow. I hope you can realize that and begin to affirm yourself and tell yourself that whoever you are, you are beautiful. And in a big way, that's why you have that petal that you have in your hands. Because you are beautiful. You are valuable. You are worthy of love, appreciation. And you are enough. You are complete as you are. You need nothing external of you to affirm you and to make you beautiful. You are beautiful as you are. The only person whose affirmation you need to know that you're beautiful, powerful, credible, amazing, is you and God. Not from any other external sources. And why is it important for you to know that you, you matter, that you're valuable? Look around you, maybe when you go home over the holidays and interact with people in the different spaces you get to interact with them, you will realize that people who take care of themselves, people who value themselves, people who feel special are people who know and have the assurance within that I matter, I am beautiful, I am powerful, I have what it takes to become all I can be and be in this life. So I'd like for you to take a minute and turn to your neighbor and tell them, I honor you and I acknowledge that you're beautiful. You didn't just say those words. I also need you to tell yourself that. I acknowledge that I am beautiful. I am powerful. I am credible. I am enough. I have what it takes to be all I can be. Please, I need you to believe that. Even if you do not believe that, speak that to yourself every single day you wake up, affirm yourself, tell yourself, I can do this, I am beautiful, I have what it takes, because the truth is, you do. Make yourself useful to the world. And this is definitely related to point number one about purpose. Living life to the fullest is not just about existing and striding through life, no. It's about looking at society, seeing a need, and asking yourself the question, how do I become useful and offer help to my society with my skill, with my passion, with who I am? So how do you desire to make yourself useful to the world? I hope you discover that and find that thing today or before the end of today, as we get to interact with the various professionals, whether in arts, sciences, crafts, and, and all that. I hope you find that. And even if you do not find it today, keep searching, keep reflecting, keep having conversations with your mentors, your teachers, parents, and even the speakers and professionals that come to speak with you. Because you actually have it. Find that one way in which you can be useful to society. Right now in Kenya, we churn out about over 800,000 students who graduate from universities every year. Maybe it's now about a million or so. And we come out and say there are no jobs. 
Yet, we have the skills, we have talents, we have potential. So what is it that is lacking? Ability to think critically. So think, how do I make myself useful to the world? And begin to work around that. Take action, take responsibility, and be able to lead yourself to get there. The other lesson is be an all-rounded individual. Be an all-rounded individual. I get the opportunity and the privilege to interact with young people, not just in Kenya, but globally. And I have seen that some of the, the few outstanding individuals, professionals, whether young or old, are people who are all-rounded. Spiritually, physically, mentally, intellectually, in every aspect of life. And that's why it is important to study and study hard. But it's also important to interact with each other. It's also important to have conversations and have great conversations, positive conversations. Number four, there is no limitation to what you can be or become in life. There is no limitation. Out here in, in, in some spaces, I hear people saying, women can do this, women can't do this, men can do this, women can't do this, men can't do this, and the truth is, you can be anything, you can do anything you want to do. There is no limitation. We have amazing women doing amazing work as, as professionals, as political leaders who are ethically driven, as doctors, as farmers, as business people, as surgeons, as artists, poets, authors. And I'm sure you know all these women. We have amazing women doing stuff. And so gender is not a limitation. And I hope to remind you that today. I wish to remind you that today. Gender is no limitation. Age is no limitation. So essentially, there is no limitation whatsoever to what you can achieve, become, and be able to serve in society. Just remember that. There is no limitation. Even when you have been brought up differently with your brothers or the male species in your space, I hope you tell yourself and you, rem you remember. And I'm, I'm so glad that then professionals were here and professionals are here to talk to you. You will see that some of the most male-dominated spaces we have women doing amazing stuff. In some of the most gender, female-dominated spaces, we also have men doing stuff. Men and women need each other and we work together as partners but not as competitors. And just remember, there's no limitation. Remember that. Finally, I wish to, to, to share someone's story that I encountered. She, she was supposed to be here today, but unfortunately something came up and she wasn't able to make it. She is called Jerry Mwadi. Njeri turns 27 years old today. She is a young woman who is doing amazing stuff. I met Njeri about five or so years ago. I had been invited to go to Moy University to speak to the student leaders. And when I left, at the end of the day, I then boarded a matatu to go to town and then take a bus to, to go back to Nairobi. And she sat next to me. We started having a conversation, just some random conversation, finding out, so who are you? What are you studying? Why are you in leadership? What makes you tick? What are the challenges you're facing? And we kept talking and the conversation kept going. But suffice it to say that that was the beginning of a journey between Jerry and myself and many other young women leaders at Mo University. Because after that, Jerry then decided to enroll um, for the leadership, mentor, leadership and Mentorship Program that we run at Emerging Leaders Foundation. And that was when we were just starting out. So everything was a bit hazy, not so clear, but we were running with it anyway. She would travel from Eldoret to Nairobi for the mentorship sessions and then go back to school. She was one of the most outstanding individuals. She picked in and took in all the lessons we taught. She did her assignments. She consulted with her mentors. And right now, it's been over five years, and she still has the same mentor we paired her up with, and she has many more mentors. 
But that is not what is special about Njeri. Njeri went on to um, found the chapter for Moi University for Emerging Leaders Foundation to mentor young women leaders at that institution to become outstanding. She graduated and got a first class. She was a law student. She came out and decided to start taking part in moot court competitions and she won from the country level, regional level, continental level and went to, to win at the global stage. She was focused and very purposeful. She then, through her mentor, applied for a scholarship to go to Spain and, and study trade law. However, she got a partial scholarship to do that, and she didn't have money. Her parents were not able to, to raise the remaining part of the scholarship. And through her mentor, they decided to put up a little poster on Facebook to ask for support for her to raise money to go to school. The good thing is, she was actually able to raise that money. She went to Spain, studied, cleared her education. She was among the top three students globally. And out of that, she got an attachment to work with World Trade Organization as a specialist. And then came back to Kenya when her internship was over. And right now, she has been employed briefly um, as she awaits to go back to WTO. She has been employed as a lecturer at Riara University to teach law. And she's only turning 27 today. When you are focused, when you see the bigger picture, when you see the goal, no matter the challenges, you will surmount. No matter the many times you fail as you strive towards your success, you will conquer if you only choose not to give up and to focus on the bigger picture. Njeri is a success story. I am so proud of her. She ended up, of course, graduating from the Emerging Leaders Program, and she comes back to us as a speaker, as a mentor to younger people, younger men and women, and she's really outstanding. And I look at you today, and I see outstanding young women. I see outstanding individuals. I see leaders. I see powerful individuals. I see great political leaders who will change our nation. And I hope from here we can have a female president to lead Kenya. Do we have anybody who feels they, can, they actually have what it takes to lead our country? Anyone? I can see a hand. I can see a Wow. Let's appreciate them. Let's appreciate them. How many of us want to be doctors? I see many hands, lawyers, activists, artists, ICT practitioners, authors, wow. I hope you remember you can be anything and everything you want to be. Do you agree with me? And do you believe you can? If you believe you can say yes, I can. Yes, I can. Say it louder. Yes, I can. Louder. Yes, I can. Thank you so much and God bless you. So today uh, during the speech, what I really picked up was that your background doesn't determine who you're going to be and the things you go through in life don't necessarily have to break you. They actually shouldn't, but they should be your stepping stone to become a better person each day. I think one great thing that I learned is because it used to really frustrate me how there was no one, I used to think there was no one who'd actually care enough about us to give me a voice to raise my opinion on various issues in the country and say that this is going on wrong and I to make a difference. But today I've learned that there's actually someone who's making that initiative to make a big difference in Kenya. Um, these people who, when they think about what they want to do in life, you want to serve humanity in different ways, you want to, you know, excel in different ways. And when she said that you can actually do it all, you can balance it all, just be all-rounded, 
trust in yourself, I was very inspired. She's opened my mind to understand that every single situation is a learning situation, that as much as I might fall, I should just keep on pursuing my dream. There are times that it will be hard, but my passion should be the one pushing me forward. My purpose, I should not work towards having a career, but I should work for my purpose in this earth. I think there'll be a big difference if more leaders like Karen came up and actually showed the youth for the future generation of Kenya that what the present generation is doing, the mistakes and all they're doing that just doesn't seem right and show us the right way to do it and actually mentor us and help us grow to become the leaders that will actually implement the vision that there is for Kenya.